So you've learned the basics of web development and you're ready to apply for that first junior role. Great news! But how do you make sure you stand out from the crowd in front of potential employers? It can be tough. That's why I recently invited senior software engineer and hiring manager Darren Doria onto my live stream and asked his advice on how to shine throughout the application, the interview and beyond. Now I've condensed our one hour chat down into eight of my favorite tips for you to enjoy. Let's take a look. Are there some core skills that everyone needs to know? You'll see a lot of candidates come in with the basics like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Those are mainly the core uh, technical skills that you need to get that first job in front end. I think to really stand out though, you have to, again, this isn't a requirement. This is if you do want to stand out as a candidate, is to really take one of those and uh, like dive deeper into building something with those that really demonstrate your understanding of that tech. So at the junior level, we're not expecting candidates to come in and have like this deep understanding of the whole tech stack, right? Because a lot of that is learned on the job. But for example, if you want to dive in deeper into HTML, you can take a look at like some of the accessibility things that you would use on the HTML side, adding like um, role and ARIA attributes. With mm -hmm. CSS, you can take a regular button that you would normally style and give it some more interactivity on like hover and focus, maybe keyboard bindings. And then with JavaScript, that's like such a big surface area. You can really pick anything in JavaScript and, and dive deep into it with like promises, callbacks, how does the this in JavaScript work? Things like that really um, demonstrate that you've gone past a tutorial or a boot camp and you're really trying to dive deeper into one of these. A man is wanting to know what kind of projects they should build to get that first job. There really is no one kind of projects you should build. Things that I've witnessed that get people's foot in the door is working on something that maybe solves a problem that they're currently having. Let's say you want to build something simple, like a little tool, maybe like a script on your computer that you run that gets you certain events on your calendar. Simple things like that you can start to build to showcase like your interest and maybe like your problem solving skills. They don't always have to be full fledged like web apps. You can start out with things like Chrome extensions. You can start out with like building a web scraper and building your own API to access like data that you may want to find on the web. Recently, I built a, a Raycast extension, like a, like a spotlight tool that you can use to like integrate, maybe like to speed up your productivity. So those kind of things, I think the reason I like them is because it's something that you're building for yourself and you're going to find it useful. So at the end of the day, that kind of drives you to finish it and come to completion. And it helps you just talk about it a little bit more. Like when someone asks like, oh, can you tell me why you built this? Like you can tell people get excited about it. Well, like this is something that I was struggling with and I wanted to see if I can find a solution for myself. So I went out and built it. Do you think I need to learn a JS framework to stand out? The short answer is no, you don't need to learn a JS framework. It definitely helps though. Candidates looking for those entry level jobs, they've probably taken a React course, a Vue course. But at the same time, I've seen people build really amazing projects with just the basics, right? HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. When someone sees your something that you've built, the first question isn't necessarily, what did you use to build this, right? They want to see like, does it function well? Is it buggy? Are the interactions nice? You're not necessarily like always diving straight into the back end. I've been surprised in the past seeing projects that I'm like, wow, this is really thought out. It's built really well. It looks nice. And then the person that built it, they just use JavaScript, right? And I think if you find a project like that, that could even be more impressive because it shows that you have a solid understanding of the fundamentals and getting you on to something like React at that point will probably be really easy and it wouldn't be a concern for me as someone hiring. Flash Learning is asking about algorithms. How many do I need to learn? They always help. When you're starting out, you're going to need them for interviews at certain places. At Wistia, we don't ask like algorithm-based questions or whiteboard interviewing. And I've seen more companies uh, in the industry moving away from those types of questions. If you go through a traditional like computer science uh, program at a university, that's going to be a lot of the things that you do learn. So that makes sense why they would ask those questions starting out at bigger companies. I don't think you need them to get the job. That's like kind of the, the bare bones answer. But I do encourage people to read up and learn those if they haven't done that before. You're not necessarily going to need algorithms your first couple months on the job, but they always end up 
coming up later on. They're going to be like a good way to solve problems later on. And once you have exposure to those algorithms, you start uh, seeing different patterns and ways to solve those problems. When you're on the job, it comes in really, really handy. I did my my four year degree and when I was first starting out, I didn't use any of those, right? So I was like, man, I learned all this stuff and I'm not even using it. I was pretty um, upset about that. Yeah. And then uh, like a year or so into the job, we were working with with a mapping API and we had to draw a bunch of stuff overlaid on top of the map. And it was this really deep nested structure. And on the job, we're like, well, if we, we can use some sort of like tree type data structure to map this out. And if you have that uh, background with algorithms, you would know like what's the quickest way to traverse this type of tree, especially like if we're looking for something that's really deep in the tree or if we're just looking for something at a high level, right? So those Mm -hmm. algorithms do end up coming handy and having to learn them on the job at that point would just kind of like slow you down, right? Flash Learning has a question around the difference between a junior developer and a senior developer. I think we should also mention the difference between an intern and a junior. I, I think people see these differently. So it almost depends on the company you're applying for and how they define it. In my mind, when you're looking for an intern, you're looking for someone who may be part-time, who doesn't have a full understanding. Maybe they just know how to code and they don't really know frameworks too in depth. They don't really know JavaScript maybe too in depth. They've probably only done HTML, CSS. It's implied that there's a lot more learning on the job. Whereas a junior role, you're expecting them to come in and be able to contribute at some level. They're probably going to start with that slow ramp, but within a few, like three to six months, they're probably going to be contributing on a small scale of projects. I think between a junior and a senior developer, that becomes more about how self-sufficient you are. You're able to take a project, scope it out, and break it up into smaller chunks. You're able to estimate how long that work's going to take. You already have the experience to know, well, I've seen this type of feature before. And so I already know how I'm going to build it and how I'm going to split up that work. And there's less of you relying on someone else to come in and guide you through that process. And they're going to just like dive right into the project and start building that out. What would be three questions you would ask on an interview regarding JavaScript? I'm not a fan of asking coding like questions like in the abstract. JavaScript has such a wide surface area. You don't really know how far deep into the rabbit hole they've gone on JavaScript. What I do like to do is I'll, I'll take a project that they've either have worked on or if it's um, like, it's like a take home coding assignment, I'll take code that I know they have written before and ask them to expand on that. Why you used this promise here versus like this other API. That's a better conversation than asking these like trivia type questions about the language. People aren't going to know those anyway. Even if you're a more experienced developer, if it's on an API that you work with daily, most of the time people are just going to Google it and be like, oh yeah, that's how that works. I forgot. And then move on. Slim Bloodworth is asking, some entry-level job postings have requirements of five plus years of experience to apply. If we think we meet roughly 80% of the skills and requirements, should we apply anyway? Most of the time, these job postings are automated. It's typically not the person doing the interviewing that's always writing the job posting, if that makes sense. Depending on how the, how the company structure, they might have a separate team that's in charge of like recruiting that they'll put together these postings. So they might not always know what to put on there. Same thing goes for like, if they're putting certain skills, sometimes they'll, they'll put like, you need JavaScript, React, and Vue or something. And then you might be looking like, well, is it React or Vue? Or like, am I actually doing both? If it says entry level job, I would discount those five plus years of experience. Because at that point, you're, it's not entry level anymore. So okay. like one of those two has to give. If the rest of the job posting makes it sound like they are, in fact, looking for a lot of experience and it doesn't sound like entry level position, then maybe it's not really entry level posting. That 80% threshold is like a good way to look at it because really there's no downside in applying. You know, if you get turned down, then you get turned down, but you can always move on to another application. Alexandra is wondering, how can I understand if my level of JS is good enough for a junior developer role. At the very least, you should be able to like scan through a file of JS code and understand what's happening, right? At a, at a high level. If you can look at some code online in the open source world and you can look through and be like, oh, okay, like I can understand this. Like maybe if it comes to like writing it back from scratch, I might not completely, but I know exactly what's happening here. 
I'd say that you're already at a, at a really good spot. If you know the basics of interacting with web APIs, like finding elements on the page, maybe like hiding and showing them, doing some basic data fetching and retrieving data from an API, then at that point, you're, you're probably in a good spot to apply for a junior role. That's it for my top tips on how to stand out as a junior developer from Taryn Doria. I hope they were helpful. Let me know in the comments below which was your favorite. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more top tips videos like these. See you next time.